I feel like 2025 has brought about the end of three pretty major things in the web design world. And I feel good about it too, because I think going into 2026, we're all gonna make a lot more money if we make these shifts. And I think it's also gonna be a pretty big dividing line between those of us who do and those of us who don't. And they're not made, the third one is kind of major, but the first two are almost more positional. And the first one is, nobody wants to hire a professional web designer anymore. So I think it's a great idea for us all to stop calling ourselves web designers. Like, I feel like today, if you say, I'm a professional web designer, it's kind of like saying that you're like a webmaster from like 10 years ago. You know, like when I remember like in the very early days, I remember standing in the kitchen and um, trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. I'm talking to my mom and you know, this is like 25 years ago or something like that. You know, I was just getting, getting ready to finish up college and everything. And my brother was there and he's like, you ought to be a webmaster. <laughs> I was like, a webmaster? Yeah, that's so cool. And so like... But nobody says that anymore. I mean, you might see the word webmaster when you're like reserving a domain name or something, but nobody uses that term anymore. That's super outdated. And I feel like professional web designer is sort of, you know, I feel like that title is kind of gone the way of the webmaster. And I think that the, the new way, the way I'm talking about my business and, and what we do in Doublestack and everything, is we're kind of making this upgrade from just being a web designer to being really a, a marketing partner because there's so many things that you can do besides web design these days. And in fact, if all you're doing is web design, I don't really think you're actually helping the client that much. Everybody already has websites. It's not, I don't think there's any local business that either has a bad website or no website at all for lack of being able to find a professional web designer. You know, it's like, it's all about the results and like, why am I gonna even bother with the website when I'm getting all my clients through Facebook and what are the opportunities? You, you, I really feel like we need to be positioned as marketing partners because there's so much stuff. I mean, I don't think that the, that the average local business owner could ever even ask you for the right stuff anymore. I mean, simply figuring out how to combine a Google business profile with your local business website in such a way that they both support each other. I mean, it's like no local business owner is ever gonna ask specifically for that. And, it, and that just that one skill set, I think goes beyond just being a web, a web designer or a professional web designer into being more of a marketing partner. So I feel like shift number one is just upgrade from being a, a professional web designer into more of a marketing partner who includes web design as part of the offer. The second one though, is like, as we're working with our clients, I just think it's a mistake to sell maintenance plans. In fact, last week we were talking about hosting and how I feel like it's a really good idea to charge at least $100 per month for hosting because it's not really just hosting. And so I wanna talk a little bit more about what I mean and to, to clarify from last week's video and everything. I think it's a mistake to not have every client pay you at least $100 per month. And I said it was for hosting in the last video because that's really the main thing. Like if I'm going to host your website, I require my clients to pay $100 per month for that. But it's not because the hosting costs $100 a month or it's not because the cost went up on my hosting or anything like that. It's because I do a lot more than just the hosting. And it's really three major things that go into it. And this is bare bones minimum. Like, like I just don't ever do less than this. Absolutely do more. But like as your base entry, like relationship with your client, $100 per month, man, if you're not charging at least $100 per month, everyone is losing. And here's why. So here's what, here's what goes into the three things. Obviously the hosting, but I host all my websites over on SiteGround. And so I think it's like $45 per month now. Like I've been over there for a few years. I think the first year was like, I think I paid like $60 for like the whole year. But now it's $45 per month. I have 25-ish websites on, on one account. I think it's the, the was it Go Geek account. I think it's the big one that they've got over there. It's just, um, it's not cloud hosting. It's just like managed WordPress hosting. It's perfect for local business websites because local sites generally don't get tons of traffic compared to like national brands or something like that. And you can get a lot of sites on that hosting and the backups and the maintenance. Like everything is great in terms of that hosting package. I really like it a lot, but it's not very expensive. So why would you charge $100 per month if you can host 25 websites for like 45 bucks a month? It's like only a couple dollars per site. Where is the extra $100 coming from? Well, it's coming from two major areas. One area is like the maintenance and support part. So like, I'm gonna go and make sure that the plugins are updated and the comment spam is cleared out. And you know, if anybody has like a, a technical need, then I'm gonna include that in that monthly service without having to write like 15 minute invoices to people or whatever. Or somebody could say, hey, we, we just hired a new employee. Can you post this picture on our About Us page? And I would just do that for free because it's included in that, in that package. So that's sort of like the maintenance and support part of it. 
And I think it's I think it's critical to do that because if you don't, then we talked about last week how you sort of just get buried by the straws. You know, like the straw that broke the camel's back. It's like if you just have a couple of clients putting a couple of straws on the camel's back, that's not that big of a deal. But like once you get up to 25 or 50 clients and everybody has like a little thing here and there and you're doing it all for free and you're not charging for it because you're not on one of these $100 per month plans, you just burn out. Like you just can't, you can't sustain all of that. That's too much. And so I just feel like that's a really big mistake. But then there's another part too. And I know that one of the things that holds people back from wanting to charge $100 per month or more to as like a minimum monthly subscription, so to speak, to your hosting package and your maintenance package is, well, a lot of times if I say I'm including up to an hour of support every month, the client doesn't really ask me for an hour of support every month. And then I don't roll over the hours to the next month. So I'm not, it's not like I'm going to do two hours the next month. And so I feel like I'm just charging like like $90 per month for nothing. And because they're not asking me to do anything, nothing's broken on the site that I need to fix. And so we just kind of let it roll. And then it feels like to me, I'm charging for nothing. And that the client feels like they're paying for nothing. And it just doesn't feel right. And it isn't right. It feels like you're just gouging or overcharging or just cheating the clients in some way. And so I don't want to do that. And therefore, I don't want to charge $100 per month for this kind of hosting package. And I totally get it. And, and, and so instead of that, instead of just being like, well, they're not asking me for anything, I'm not going to do anything, do this thing that we call the quick win assessment. So like in the event that you do get a lot of stuff coming in and, and you spend your whole hour doing whatever the client asks for, that's, that's a month where you don't really need to do a quick win asse- assessment because you already did the hour of updates or whatever. But I would say most of the time, at least in my experience with my clients, it is mostly the case that they don't, they don't ask me for up to an hour of stuff every single month. Sometimes they do, but not all the time. And so on the times that they don't, which is the majority of the months where they're not asking for stuff, I'll do a quick win assessment, which means that I'll look at their website and I'll figure like, if I owned the site, like if this was my business and I had access to all of my skills, what would I do to help? Like, what would I do to kind of bring in some more business? Would I you know, I don't know, try a new lead magnet? Would I look at the web stats to see what the bounce rate is and maybe try some new headlines? Would I update some seasonal content? Would I create new content that, that, that gives me some ability to rank organically for some keywords? Like basically do it like a content gap assessment. Like where do I need to put more emphasis on the content that I've got? Would I do something with social media? You know, would I, would I create a nurturing campaign? Would I add an additional funnel for another product or service line? Would I work on customer loyalty? I mean, there's so many things that I could be doing and I just want to know what it is. Like, like in the event that this were my business, here's what I would do next. And I'm not going to implement that stuff. I'm just going to look for it and say, this is what I would do next. Now, now what I want to do, like if, if you were like, really ask me what do I think is like the right structure for a, like a, like an eight, like a marketing agency kind of going forward. I would say get people on at least three to $400 per month, not just $100 per month. So you can actually implement some of these quick wins that you discover without having to like ask for permission or like pitch a mini project or something. But even if you don't, like even if you don't, like let's suppose you've got like, I don't know, say you've got like a lot of clients and they're all paying you like 20 bucks a month for hosting. Like almost all the web designers I talk to, by the way, I haven't introduced myself. If you're new, I'm Lee Blue. I'm the founder of DoubleStack. I personally mentor hundreds of today's top earning web designers. And my strong encouragement is to charge more for hosting in this, in this sense, because most of the web designers I talk to charge less than $50 per month for hosting. Usually it's like 20 bucks or something like that. And the problem with that is it doesn't give you the ability to do anything about what you're, it doesn't, you can't do the quick win assessment. You can't really do the maintenance plan. You're just kind of doing the hosting. And so get people on the hundred dollars per month thing. And even and at a bare minimum, do the quick win assessment. And then that gives you almost a monthly opportunity to pitch a new mini project or a new, like a new marketing campaign to the client every single month. And usually they're small because they're quick wins. It's like, this is what I think would be the next best thing. It's not like you're going to say, I think you should spend $20,000 on this huge thing. I mean, if you happen to discover something that you feel like they need, that's going to be huge. Like implementing a whole CRM or something like that, then you, know, you maybe bring that up. But that's not what I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about right now is just like these little quick wins. Like, hey, I don't think the response rate is high enough on this lead magnet. I'd like to try a new one for you. Can I do that? Or I think we could introduce an additional funnel so that in addition to this primary service, we have this other service that we could, we could you know, start offering and driving, driving leads through the secondary funnel. Stuff like that. 
and then and then just pitch that stuff on a monthly basis. And then when you do stuff like that, everybody wins because now you're going to be upgrading everybody from like $20 a month to $100 a month. So right off the bat, you're making significantly, maybe five times more recurring revenue just from that one shift. But you're also allowing the client to get benefits from that shift. So you wouldn't go out and say, I'm, up, I'm, I'm upgrading or increasing the price of the hosting from $20 to $100 per month because you know, the cost of everything is so expensive now and hosting went up and all my licenses for everything, you know, everything is more expensive. Therefore, I'm raising the price of hosting. Like, don't do that. Like, that's, I mean, I don't even think that's the reason for the shift. Like, I haven't noticed a huge shift in the price of hosting or anything like that. I've noticed a huge shift in the price of other things, but not hosting. And so I think if you were just to say, I'm incre- like my costs have increased, therefore I'm increasing your cost for hosting, I think a lot, a lot of clients are going to kind of get a sour taste over that and not like it. So instead, just position it as I'm doing more better stuff so that you win. Like you're going to get benefits. You're, I'm going to do a quick win assessment for you every month and make some recommendations as to where I think your business could be going if you wanted to. And, and, then, and then position it by saying there's so many new things that are going on in the web design and marketing world these days that I feel like my, all of my clients can be getting dramatically better results. So I'm, I'm, I'm insisting basically that all of my clients bump up to this $100 per month package so that not only can I do the hosting, but I can also offer up to an hour of tech support every month and I can do a quick win assessment to make sure that everything is always, like you always know what the next step is for your business in terms of the marketing side of it. And that would be a huge shift. And so now the client's thinking, not only are they going to get all the hosting and the, and the tech support they need, but you're also going to begin to step into this marketing partnership role. Like, do you see how that changes your identity? I'm going to get to the changed identity part in just a second in more detail. But do you see what I mean by that? You're not just the web designer anymore. You're now stepping into this leadership role as a marketing partner to show them what they could do to actually scale up, to actually grow, to get some measurable business results as a quick win from the next month of of working with you. Now, you don't have to implement it, just offer it. Say, here's what I think the next thing would be for us to do. Maybe it's something like, I think we should refresh your lead magnet. I've noticed the conversion rate has dropped. Maybe it's seasonal content and you need to refresh it. I think it's time to do that refresh and it's like 500 bucks. You know, so it'd be like a small little project that you could then pitch and then they could say yes, and, and then you make 500 bucks that you weren't making before. They could say, no, I think we need to hold off until next month. But the point that I'm making here is you're shifting into this marketing partnership role and you're constantly offering, hey, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, which is like, that's so much better because they're going to be get better results from that. You're going to make more money from that. All of your clients will be more successful from that. And you're beginning to really tear yourself apart from just the garden variety web designers that aren't even thinking about their clients' results into being this marketing partner that cares deeply about their results. So I think that's a huge shift that I'm seeing happening. And I feel like 2025 is kind of the end of the road for people that just sell websites as professional web designers or something like that. So that's number two. Here's the third one though. And this is what I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. I'm gonna do another deeper explainer video on what I mean by this nested agency concept. But I think that the future of web design is this concept of a nested agency. And here's, here's kind of an analogy to think of what a nested agency is. Imagine if you had like a local news channel with a web agency kind of built into it, right? So like the, the, the way that people would initially discover you is through the news and, and the, the, the news channel side of your business. And then as you're promoting, like say for example, you then interview a local business owner and then like spotlight their business on your website and promote them through your social media channels and then just like, just like let people know that you can introduce them to your entire town for free because it's part of, it's like, like, a, like, a, like a news interview. And then as you're interviewing them for, to, like, to get the content that you need so that you can actually write up the spotlight and, and push everything out to social and everything like that, you could just look at what they've got going on in their business with regard to their website, their Facebook page, their Google business profile, their reviews, their email list. Are they nurturing leads? Are they getting customer loyalty? Like just start looking at all of these different things that they could be doing and probably should be doing and make a recommendation. Hey, you know, before we, before we push this spotlight out there, I think a bunch of people are going to go to your Google business profile and like look to see your, what your reviews are. Why don't you let us help you with reputation management real quick before we launch this spotlight? Or I think people are going to want to go to your website, but I think a lot of people are going to want to learn a little bit more about how your business works before they call to sign up. Why don't we put an email opt-in on there so that they can actually 
you know, get sort of that the lead magnet that you can then nurture into a call rather than just having people think, oh, that's kind of interesting, but I'm not ready to buy yet. And then they just bounce off the site, but you, n you no longer have a connection because they didn't opt into anything. So why don't we just start building your email list? You know, see what I mean by that? It's like we're just offering a couple of extra things, but we've got the relationship coming in because it's of, of, like, of like the local news channel concept. So that gives you this really great way to reach out to people. So it solves the lead generation problem. It positions you as a marketing partner. You're, you're setting yourself up to have these long going kind of partnership, recurring revenue relationships. And I just think that's, I'm 100% convinced that that is the future of web design going into next year. So I'm gonna put two things up here in just a second. I'm gonna show, I've got a, a training on my website called, it's called Local Legends. Is this kind of local news concept? Check that out if you wanna see like literally how we're getting the leads. But I dive into a little bit more detail on what it means to be like a nested agency in this video right here. So if that's interesting to you, check that out. But either way, check one of these things out because I think these two things are the future of web design going into 2026. So I'll see you right there. Talk soon.